Good evening and welcome to Eagle Eye News at 6. I'm Samantha Avila. And I'm Adrian Ellis. Auburn continues to see a decline in reported COVID cases with only 52 positive COVID-19 cases. The cumulative amount for the university is now 1,542. Lee County has 93 new cases in the last seven days with 59 confirmed deaths. The total amount for the county now stands at 3,832 as of September 15th. If you have or suspect that you have COVID-19, please self-report and contact the Resource Center. They can be contacted at 334-844-6000, as well as by email at covidresourcecenter at auburn.edu. As a result of the declining report positive COVID-19 cases, Auburn University has modified some aspects of its COVID-19 practicing and policies, including easing certain mask wearing restrictions. In an email sent to faculty and staff last week, the university announced that the following changes will be instituted. Starting today, September 28th, masks are no longer required to be worn outdoor if physical distancing of at least six feet can be maintained. Also starting today, events with up to 100 attendees will now be allowed. The university has required masks both outdoor and indoor since the third, uh, out day, third day of class. The upcoming policy will nullify the requirement. Ahead of Auburn's first football game against Kentucky this past weekend, Auburn Athletics announced new game day protocols for students and guests for the fall 2020 football season. The new regulations are designed to protect fa fans' safety and health as well as the health and of the players and stadium staff. The long list of protocols covers all the bases of game day operations from seating to concessions to travel. Some of the protocols include physical distancing, signage and markings throughout the stadium and entry gates, requiring face coverings for anyone, fans, workers, and athletic staff in the stadium at all times, directional signs, and barriers installed around the stadium to facilitate physical distancing of six feet between fans. For more information about the new game day protocols and how to prepare for games, you can visit Auburn Athletics' website. Coming up, Auburn Athletics announces the sale of a new shirt to support their Together We Will initiative. You're watching Eagle Eye TV, Auburn's news leader. Welcome back to Eagle Eye News at 6. As part of the recently launched Together We Will initiative, Auburn Athletics is asking fans to show their support for the effort and purchase an official Auburn Unity t-shirt and wear it on Friday, October 9th, the day before Auburn's home football game versus Arkansas. The shirt can be pre-ordered for $19.95 through the AU Team Shop. Fans are encouraged to place their orders early. A portion of proceeds will go to the newly created Together We Will Scholarship, created to support the university's effort to achieve a diverse enrollment of students while enhancing access, affordability, and academic quality. Supporters can also be made a financial distribution directly to the scholarship at auburnalabama.edu slash um, giving together. The Auburn Alumni Association has launched a face mask initiative through which Auburn alumni and friends can purchase exclusive, limited edition Auburn face masks for personal use while also donating a mask to the underserved areas of Alabama. In partnership with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, the Auburn Alumni Association will donate a mask to the area of greatest need in the state of Alabama for every mask that is sold through its mask initiative. To learn more about the program or to order masks, visit aub.ie slash Auburn Alumni Mask. Do you want to go into sports production but don't know what to major in? Well, this fall, the School of Communication and Journalism in Auburn's College of Liberal Arts launched a sports production track within the journalism major, the first of its kind in the Southeastern Conference. The school originally began offering sports production elective courses in 2014 when it created a partnership with Auburn Athletics and War Eagle Productions. Since then, War Eagle Productions has, developed, has delivered more than 350 live events per year, ranging from the Jumbotron in Jordan-Hare Stadium to ESPN and SEC Network Productions. A degree in sports production is geared towards students who love collegiate and professional sports and want to be a part of the production teams who deliver live sporting events to the world's homes and mobile devices. The City of Auburn regulates all signages within Auburn city limits and they have a few reminders for the upcoming 2020 election season. They ask that the political signs only be placed out within 30 days before the election. The upcoming election date is November 3rd, which means that signs must be placed out beginning October 4th. Signs should also be no more than 32 square feet. All signs must be on private property and cannot be placed on city rights of ways, utility poles, or traffic signs. In most neighborhoods, the right of way is typically between the water meter and the roads. Signs placed in this right of way will be removed. Signs for all candidates must be removed within seven days of the election. 
For more info, you can contact the Inspection Service Department at 334-501-3170 or webcoats at auburnalabama.org. Kenneth Reith, a freshman in the College of Agriculture at Al Auburn, made history this year by becoming the first black president of, Auburn, of Alabama 4-H. Alabama 4-H is the stateside branch of America's largest youth development organization with a community of more than 100 public universities providing educational and leadership experience. And his second year as state ambassador for Alabama, Reese ran for the statewide office of Alabama 4-H president and competed for the position with a presentation about the organization's endless opportunity. After securing the role of 2019-2020 president, he learned that he was both the first black state ambassador and president in Alabama 4-H. When we come back, is each pet of the week cuter than the last? And also, a man died from eating too much candy? We'll be right back. Welcome back to Eagle Eye News at 6. The sky is more blue in Malibu and our new pet of the week, Malibu, is ready to meet you. This cute pup is full of life and energy despite her age. She's still got a lot of love to give you and is ready to be your new best friend. As long as you have a tasty treat nearby, she is ready to listen. Malibu is seven years old, spayed, vaccinated, and microchipped. She has been treated for heartworms and is now negative. She's been here for over 100 days looking for her forever home, so her adoption fee is only $25. You can apply for her at leecountyhumane.org adopt. They say too much of a good thing can be harmful. This was the case for one Massachusetts man who loved black ludicrous that ultimately cost him his life. In a case report recently detailed in the New England Journal of Medicine, doctors revealed that a 54-year-old Massachusetts construction worker essentially overdosed on black ludicrous. The candy contains acid, which caused the man's potassium levels to plummet. Dangerously low levels of potassium can lead to abnormally heart rhythms high blood pressure, and in some cases, congestive heart failure. The man, who was not identified in the case report, collapsed while eating lunch at a fast food restaurant. He reportedly ate a bag of licorice or more a day. We're out of time, but for more Auburn news, head over to our website, eagleeyeauburn.com, and check out our YouTube page. I'm Samantha Avila. And I'm Adrian Ellis. Thanks for watching, and War Eagle.